Okay, we're back here live at the Velocity Conference. This is SiliconAngle.com's theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, SiliconAngle and theCUBE, we're four years old. This is our fourth season doing theCUBE, and we'd love to go to the events and talk to the alpha geeks, and we, we call them the tech athletes, the guys who are out there making, making the things, uh, making everything work under the, under the hood, making things faster, and of course, as we've been talking about, on the cube for many, many years. You know, the web scale companies, Google, Yahoo, they're all built the web. Facebook, obviously, you know, a more, more recent uh, company, really created the web ops scale uh, and had to build their own stuff because there was nothing available. And, and, and that's really the key story around the history of the web. But having Google on is always impressive, but also having developers is great. SiliconANGLE was built on the philosophy of computer science meets social science, and that's our philosophy. And you know, when you get geeks and user experience kind of working together, that really is what changes the world in our opinion and that's really kind of what's happening here at Velocity Conference. And my next guest is uh, Ilya Grigorik at Google, developer advocate for high performance. You're also an author with O'Reilly. Yep. You're up talking today. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So my first question is obviously, um, you know, Google is a poster child for build their own. I mean, it's, it is, it's like the NASA lab meets Stanford University academic. You got, you know, Google's got a, you know, drivable, you know, cars that can drive themselves, you get Google Glass, you get a lot of R&D, a lot of cool, smart people working on stuff, but you got a big business in yep. Google, yep. you know, in and of itself, called Search and, <laughs> and AdWords yep. that, that pay the bills. Um, so you guys have a little bit of experience in, in, in making things run faster, because quite frankly, you know, the faster the pages load, the faster people get their results, and the faster people click on links. Yep. So you're highly motivated to make it go faster. Yep. Um, so I want to ask you, what do you, what's your take about Velocity Conference? You, you know, you're talking to the folks out here, a lot of hallway conversations. What is your take on today's world around speed and performance, user interface, backend design, cloud meets, user experience? So I think you hit it spot on, right? So Google is very motivated to make the web succeed, right? We know that uh, the faster the web is, the more people will use the web, uh, the more they will use search, the more they will click on ads, and all these other things, right? So it's kind of like a secondary effect. So our goal is to make the web fast. Of course, we care a lot about speed at Google and making our web services fast, but more broadly, it, as you mentioned, you know, at Google, we've invested across the entire stack. And personally, that's one of the things I enjoy about working at Google, where we have teams that work on the lowest levels of the stack, like, you know, sometimes we design our own hardware. Uh, but we also contribute to making TCP fast and making browsers fast. We have Google Chrome and everything in between web standards and all the rest, right? So you kind of get this full slice. And here at Velocity, we get to talk to all the other people uh, that are working in the same space. And I think it's a, it's a fantastic event uh, because we have, as you mentioned, you know, there's many other companies that are making significant contributions. And this is a place for us to gather and talk about you know, what are the latest and greatest? What are, you know, what are the guys at Facebook uh, doing to make their data centers fast? Or what are they doing to make Flickr fast at Yahoo and all the rest? Uh, the thing about the exciting, to me at least, someone who's been uh, you know, been with the web from the beginning, going back in the early 90s, I've seen, I've seen the evolution, right? And we were commenting yesterday that, uh, you know, we were up with, uh, in San Francisco, doing the Cube with General Electric there, promoting this industrial cloud or industrial web or industrial internet. Basically, it's the internet of things, but there's yep. no real name for it. But, you know, but prior to the web, it was called, we called this the information superhighway. Yep. I think that was the buzzword I, <laughs> and when I was in business school. I was like, hey, what does that mean? <laughs> and finally, the web just came around. Okay, great, the web's here, and that became history. But in seeing the evolution, you're seeing for the first time the, the people call it the consumerization. Really it's a confluence of integrating design, right? It's almost a systems architecture around looking holistically at user experience mm -hmm. and designing user experience, not in a vacuum or in a silo, and then looking at the benefits of what the cloud can offer. So you know, you're at Google, you guys built your own cloud, Facebook has done their own thing. So the hyperscale, web scale, small scale, these can, can grow very elastically. So, so I want to get your take on things that you're watching right now because you study high performance scale um, and also you want to make the web faster and you got to take advantage of that technology and then also, but keeping in mind the most important thing, user experience. So I want to ask you, what are you looking at right now out in the landscape here? You got to have the 20 mile stair around scale, what could be stack development around some tech or, or yep. things, but what yep. tech are you looking at right now saying, hey, I'm watching this, I'm building on this and I'm watching that? Right, so I think first and foremost, performance is a means to an end, right? Like we can optimize CCP and optimize all the kinds of things, but as you said, it's all about user experience, right? So it's making sure that we actually deliver products that satisfy the, the user, the, the customer, and uh, you know, it, it does so in a meaningful way. So mobile, 
I'll, I'll focus on mobile. Mobile is, of course, exploding everywhere. I think anybody you talk to at this event, you'll find that their mobile traffic is going through the roof. It's, you know, either it has already surpassed their desktop traffic or it will in some foreseeable future. So everybody's trying to figure out what does this mean for us, right? Because we've designed our architecture, designed our data centers, and made and a lot of assumptions about things like latency and performance and all the rest based on the desktop architecture. And now we need to retool. And I think that's, at this conference, we're seeing a lot of these conversations. Like, what does it mean to, or what does it take to build a web page or an application that is responsive on a mobile phone, right? Uh, it turns out, yeah. when we talk to the users, just because it's on a mobile phone, they don't expect it to be any slower. In fact, they expect it to be faster because, hey, I'm on the go. I want the answer quickly. I want it to happen right now, right? But turns out the kind of the physical layers don't necessarily correspond to that because Sometimes it just takes longer uh, to do things on mobile, like the radio and other things. So uh, lots and lots of conversations at this event, uh, lots of talks about how do you optimize for all these things. You know, mobile conversation is interesting because you know, in the web development world, agile became the, the, the norm and that was really about iteration. You know, the same kind of QA thing, there's a debate around what agile means in terms of that doesn't mean just punch out bad code, you still got to do some <laughs> QA, you're doing QA faster, but agile means you can push code and if it breaks, you can iterate the web page and just re resurface some new code. Mobile's a little bit different, it's almost like back to the old days of you know, pre-packaged software. People, it's hard to get that, those apps back, especially when you have multiple, multiple iterations. It's a bug in mobile. Mobile, it's hard to get that back. So how do you do agile programming in mobile? And at the same time, how do you make it go faster? Because if you have you know, a million downloads and all of a sudden, yep. eight months later, if you don't have auto updating, you know, I know this stuff's evolving, especially with Android's a lot more up, uh, mobile updates, but now this is a developer paradigm. Do I use certain stacks to do that? And what's yep. the mobile yep. look like for a developer? So, I think you focused on apps, right? But then there's the mobile web. And the mobile web is where you see, you, you have all of the benefits of that instant updates, right? Because you can push an update. It's just a website at the end of the day, right? Which means you can push as many releases as you want. Um, there was a, a great talk by the uh, Google consumer service team uh, earlier yesterday. And uh, they shared some of the stats and how they deployed their application. Turns out they deployed 30 times a day, right? At Google scale to all of their customers. And uh, they built a number of tools uh, for mobile specifically, for how do you like, how do you even do that? As, as you mentioned, it's not just about pushing code; it's making sure that you actually push code and deliver value, right? So they've automated things like I push this thing, and I want to compare the difference in pixels on the screen, such that yeah. you know I didn't introduce a bug into the, into my application. So lots of interesting tools and investment there. It, it is possible. Well, right? server side, Node.js has shown a way on JavaScript at least. People are using a lot more Node because they can focus on the server side sure. and then manage the edge that way. Are there any technologies that you're looking at that can do more of that on the web ops? I mean, obviously, web ops is a focus area. So I think it's it's a collection of technologies, right? So Node.js is is a great runtime for a certain class of applications. A lot of our applications, uh, even coming back to the Google Consumer Service team, uh, they're actually using App Engine, right? Which gives you kind of this managed runtime, which gives you a lot of benefits. Things like you don't have to worry about, you know, is your server running or is your database scalable enough? You know, if you get a spike of visitors and all the rest. So there's a collection of services out there: AWS, you know, Google Compute Engine. All of these services together provide the necessary infrastructure. So I want to talk about your book with O'Reilly because you're working with some O'Reilly on the book side of high performance uh, web. But I also want to ask you before we talk about the book, um, you know, you're in the community here. One of the things I was pointing out on the intro is that you know, the Velocity Conference is, you know what, you really can't put your finger on it. It's not like, oh, I'm a cloud show or I'm a, hey, I'm a front end web right. show. It's kind of the intersection of that. And you know, DevOps obviously has, has, has brought a culture together. Yep. What is Velocity here? What is this all about here? And, and what mega trend is this uh, driving? Well, that's a hard question because as you said, you know, there's a number of people that are here that are focusing on uh, building apps and specifically kind of the front end performance. Then there's the DevOps people who are concerned about, well, how do I make the back end scale with all the demands of the front end? And then you have an intersection in between, right? And the testing and the tooling and all the pieces that kind of put all of this together. So to me, Velocity has literally many meanings, right? It's like how do you increase the velocity of your team such that you can release more apps more quickly, deliver more value? How do you increase the speed of the pages? How do you increase the conversion ratios? Like uh, one of the things that, that we're discovering here at this conference is that there are many, many talks. Virtually every talk that you, that you attend will talk about not just performance for performance sake. Like we're engineers, we love fast things. But performance because there's value, right? Like it tr we can translate it back to dollars and cents for the business. So speed is a future, 
And to me, that's what Velocity is about. Yeah, and it's interesting, it's, it's, it's a lot of infrastructure as well. So it is, in a, in a way, a cloud show, but not in a pure pure way. So your book, real quick, because we got a break, but I want to get the, uh, the plug-in for, the, for the, the work you're doing with O'Reilly. Yep, so I'm writing a book called High Performance Browser Networking. Uh, it's basically TCP and up. Uh, so how does CCP work, how, how many, or what kind of constraints does it place on how we design our applications, which are especially important on mobile. Um, another big section I have is how do the wireless networks work, right? One of the great things about kind of our layered architecture is that uh, a packet is a packet, right? Like you, it doesn't matter if you send it over an ethernet wire or a Wi-Fi link or a mobile phone, but it turns out performance-wise it has important implications. So understanding those, you can design your application in a smart way. And then kind of you work way up. So I look at HTTP, we actually have HTTP 2.0 that's coming soon. And you know, what does that mean? Uh, yeah, how is yeah. it going to change? Like, are we going to change all the angle brackets in our HTML to you know, squiggly brackets? You know, no, we're not going to do that. But there are many uh, new possibilities for improving performance. So that's the subject of the book. It's kind of a bottom up yeah. and uh, hopefully helpful. Real quick sound, but I want you to also just quickly give a quick summary of what does the native browser environment mean? You've got the native browser, Firefox announced that Fluent, native browser support, you've got WebSockets now taking on a whole nother level of, of meaning. Um, what does this all mean for people out there and developers? Well, I think it means you can build more ambitious applications. So previously we built pages. So we started with a document, right, <laughs> which had like a piece of text. Then we embedded a couple of images in it. And today, if you look at an average page, uh, an average page is actually over one meg in size. It's constructed out of 80 plus resources. And we have JavaScript, we have CSS, and all these things. And with HTML5 and kind of this native support that you're describing, you can now do things that you couldn't have done before without plugins, right? You can have interactive applications. You can have HTML5 video. You can do audio. You can do web GL, uh, well, it's just, it's a crazy land out there. It's an exciting opportunity, the modern infrastructure is upon us, the modern app development, this is Velocity, I'm John Furrier, Eli Gregoric here from Google, making the web fast, that's his job, and that's what he's advocating, and this is Velocity, we'll be right back with our next guest here on theCUBE, right after this short break.